Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about a resolution strategy. I get a lot of calls from people and they always say, well, I read this, what do you think? I saw this, what do you think? And my thinking is, okay, these are tactics. What is the strategy? What are you trying to do in the room? People don't really understand the objective of what you're trying to do in the room. You're trying to get a quiet room, low noise floor. You're trying to manage all the low frequency pressure that you can. Sometimes you can't get it all because the dimensions of the room won't let you. And budget and space requirements. And third, middle and high frequency management. Three main parts. Noise, lows, mids and highs. That's the goal. So we have to have a strategy because we want to work our way towards a resolution. We offer three strategies, 78, 90% resolution. So if you choose the 70, you're going to have 30% issues remaining. 80, you're going to have 20% issues remaining. And 90, you're going to have 10% issues remaining. So let's break this down. 80, 70% is consumer. Most consumers, theaters, personal listening, they like 70, 75%, 80%. 80 to 90% is professional mix engineers. They only want to work around 20% of the problem. And then 90 is mastering. So you're only going to work around 10% of the issues with mastering. Workflow is always the objective on the pro side. How do I get my mixes to translate so I don't have to jump between rooms and cars and all this other nonsense? So the reason you do that, you take your mixes to other rooms because you're not happy with your room. Well, let's get your room fixed so you can be happy with it and not run around like a chicken with your head cut off. Okay, so 30, 20, 10, that's the remaining low frequency issues. It's always low frequency that's remaining. Middle and high frequency issues are a lot easier to resolve. Low frequency issues take a lot of space and they take a lot of budget. Okay, so you have two choices. You can live with it or you can work around it. But here's the thing. Once you choose a resolution strategy, let's say you're in this category here, working around 10 and 20% of the problems, it's not that difficult for a professional because they understand what frequency and amplitude the problems are at. So they're able to adjust electronically for that. But you want to minimize the, the number of workaround issues that you have. Mixing is a creative endeavor. Listening to music is a creative endeavor. The least hassles that you have to face in a creative endeavor, the better you are, right? So we want to get that done. Dimensions produce the frequency and amplitude of issues. It's not your fault, it's the room dimensions that are the fault, okay? So we have to choose the right type, amount, and position of the treatment, it's called TAP. What is our target SPL? Also, we have to know what pressure level you're gonna work at in this room. In order to achieve resolutions that we show above here, we have to know how much energy you put in. An EDM mixer is completely different from a vocal mixer. Tremendous difference in energy. Tremendous difference in frequency and amplitude. So the treatment, room size, everything else will be different. So you gotta know how much pressure you're gonna put in the room. So big difference between 70 and 90 dB SPL, huge difference. I would say probably 60% to 70% more treatment to get up to here, okay? Noise floor is the first treatment objective. We've got to get that room as quiet as we can. It's just the way it has to be because noise is a distortion. And noise is like, think of noise as a glass of water. Here's your chair. You're sitting in the room. The water level's up here, let's say. So we want to systematically bring the water level down so it gets below your ears and we lower the noise floor. So what does that do? That means you can mix or listen at lower pressure levels. Gear works better, treatment works better, your hearing works better at lower pressure levels. So that's the goal and that's what we have to figure out how to do it. Okay, so barrier, noise, BTU, three types of walls, right, we have. We have the noise, which is the barrier, BTU, which is climate control and treatment, 
Sometimes those walls can be combined. Sometimes they can't. It just depends on the noise issues. So we just have to see what it is. We must start with noise as our first tactic, and we got to measure all noise because the barrier we design is frequency and amplitude dependent on the noise. So a step-by-step -step process towards a resolution, we got to have a strategy. And then we take the appropriate steps to get this. Resolution strategy. I hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. And if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to. So please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis. So that'll help you. Thank you.